what we'd really like to see are uh, actionable ideas that can actually make change because it's all very well for individuals to say what they can do but ultimately we need organisations to help facilitate this change. I am a really firm believer in targets and having realisable, tangible targets and then linking to that the policy and procedure, um, the reporting and accountability, training and development, mentors and sponsorship, all centred around having targets. They identified a pay gap within their organisation, which was, it was single figure, but it was significant. And they did not give any pay rises that year. They spent every, all of their money fixing it. One year out, that's it. So, you know, companies say, oh, we're working towards closing it. I really think you just close it. Having your C-suite KPIs linked to diversity, really hard and meaningful mm. targets. Mm -hmm. And I know financial KPIs are always going to you know, be there, but if you meet your financial KPIs but don't get the diversity one, then basically all bets are off. I think you'll, all of a sudden you'll rapidly you'll refocus people and they'll become very creative as to how you know, they might come up with their own great single ideas and initiatives. Get women um, at that level talking to other women from other professions, so lawyers talking to accountants, uh, female engineers, and getting them to have that discussion from early on about, um, oh, well, you could be a client in five to ten years' time. We can build our Friday night drink relationship to one which would help me get promoted. And I've kind of called it early succession planning, so the firms actually are concentrating on that. They're realising they can't make someone senior associate and special counsel and, and then go, this is what you're ex it's expected of you, build a practice. You rotate women at middle management through the CEO's office, so as chief of staff or something mm. equivalent. I do like the idea of there being some visibility in the workplace in small teams about what people are doing outside of work. You know, are you preparing meals? Are you dropping kids to events? Are you taking your parent to the doctor? Are you... I just feel like having a little bit of accountability around those things would create some greater awareness of actually that person's day off, if you look at it, is probably the hardest day of their week. Um, and what they're doing on top of contributing in the workplace needs recognising as it stands with the, with the fact that how much unpaid work women do contribute. They're, they're not in a position to commit as much time or resources into their paid work if they're doing so much unpaid work. Create a positive culture around taking alternative career paths mid-career or mid-life. So um, the, the linear sort of career really works for a lot of people. Um, but it really doesn't work for a lot of people. Motherhood ought to be seen as a profession. Income for the working spouse would be split 50-50 between the working spouse and the stay-at-home spouse, mm. which then, um, and each of those um, partners would pay tax and superannual, uh, superannuation payments are equal. So that means that the, the stay-at-home parent still continues to receive income um, and also superannuation payments. With some ex some notable exceptions, of course, you know, uni but pretty uniformly, the female candidates are far more understated mm. in how they self-promote and how they are com uh, express confidence in their own abilities. You can call it unconscious bias, whatever you, you want to call it, but uh, at the moment it's handled quite informally that these evaluation committees are just expected to recognise that this is a, a trait and that they should somehow factor it into their deliberations and their, their recommendations, but I think there should be far more explicit and specific directions. Large shareholders are getting a vote on um, senior directors, or, or sorry, so the board of the management board's salaries. So if they don't like your salaries, you get across and then you go to the next board meeting and if you get across again, then all hell breaks loose. So um, I'm thinking that large shareholders should, in my mind, have a, have a say on an issue of diversity. On the KPIs, I think you have to go much more granular because we have KPI, we have targets and we have people who are sort of committed to you know, improving the numbers here, improving numbers there, but unless you start saying actually at a recruitment level, taking your point before Angela about you know the number of women made up to partner, for example, in law firms is only a third. If you actually break down your KPIs right down the chain to really specific things along the way, not just the ultimate goal, but specific things along the way that we know will shift things, I think that's really key. Things like people on parental leave um, have monthly um, coffee, 
coffee mm. mornings, bring yeah. the babies in. In the social, in the staff room, um, we had a wee and a foosball table. Because I don't know about you, but I found school holidays very difficult <laughs> with my children. Um, staff were encouraged to, you know, bring the kids in and, um, you know, within reason, obviously. Mm. But um, but those things really work. What I do when I um, write to law firms and ask them to make submissions on, on briefs, I will actually ask them what their diversity and inclusion policy is. But I don't just want to see the policy. I then want to know how many women do you have in partnership, but I don't want to know just how many numbers you have in partnership. I want to know how many of those women are equity partners because it's all great if you're making them a partner, but they're still on the same salary because we want the money and the title. We don't just want one, we want both.